Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and I'm excited to bring you another episode absolutely free. This episode is just one of over 80 episodes we release monthly. Each one is meticulously digitally restored and stored in the cloud, which comes at a considerable expense. To help cover these costs, you might hear some advertisements throughout this episode. While we retain the original commercials for historical authenticity, you may encounter modern ads. We promise to keep these ads to a minimum and try to place them where you would have originally heard them when they aired. If you prefer an ad-free experience, you can support us by becoming a member on our Patreon page. Go to otrwesterns.com slash donate. Again, that's otrwesterns.com slash donate for more information. I want to emphasize that we're committed to providing this content to you for free, but also want to be transparent about the financial realities of producing these shows. As a reminder, if you're listening to this episode on a service you pay for, please know that they do not support this podcast in any way, and the ads will be in this episode. Now, let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Lone Ranger. Original air date is January 12th, 1949, and the title is Mary Roberts' Legacy. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy. Fiery horse with the speed of light, a clot of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. Hey! The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode leisurely along the trail toward Hilton. The trail curved around a hillside, and as the two men rode, they kept their eyes open for a suitable campsite. We don't want to wait until we're too close to town, Tonto. Should be a good place to pitch camp somewhere along here. Isn't that right, Kimasabi? Maybe they'll be clearing soon where we can make... Uh... Those shots, Tonto. Came from up ahead around the bend. Uh, oh, Silver! Come up, Scout! Look, Kimasabi! Three men hold up stagecoach. Yes, draw your guns, Tonto, and begin shooting. Them see is coming. Outlaws leaving fast. I know, but look. The stage driver slumped over. The 
horses are running wild. Come on, Silver! Faster, big fella! Come a great and intelligent horse, Silver, sensed the urgency in his master's voice and responded to the masked man's ringing cry with a burst of speed. The masked man and Indian realized that at any moment the stage might be thrown against one of the many large boulders and be smashed to pieces. Hurry, Silver, faster! Get him up, Scout! There's a woman on stage! Yes! I'll try to swing over to the boot. You ride on up front to the lead horses. Come on, fill there! Help! Riding alongside the stage, the Lone Ranger gauged the distance as he reached the point opposite the front wheels. Rising in the stirrups, he paused for a split second, then with a mighty effort, leaped toward the stage. This is it! For a moment, the tall masked figure seemed to hang uncertainly. Then, much to Tonto's relief, the Lone Ranger pulled himself to the boot of the stage and grabbed the reins from the unconscious driver. Hold it! Ho! Ho! Easy! Pull up! Slowly but surely, the stage was brought to a stop. Then the Lone Ranger called out to Tonto, who sat holding the reins of the lead horses. It'll be all right now, Tonto. Yeah. Oh, what about driver, Kimasabi? I'll see. I'm sure he'll be all right soon, Tonto. Bullet creased his head. Take a look at him. Uh, he do it. I'll see about the passengers. Oh, oh the man. Oh, forget it, please. Are you all right? Yes, yes, I'm all right. I'm the only passenger, and I was so frightened when those men began shooting. Then the horses started to run wild. Oh, I think it's wonderful the way... We're you... glad we could be of help. My Indian friend is fixing the driver's wound. Then we'll see that you get to Hilton oh. safely. It isn't far from here. Hilton? Why, that's my destination. Perhaps you can tell me where the Circle Two Ranch is. I am afraid I don't know, Miss... I'm uh... Mary Roberts from St. Louis. My uncle died a few months ago out here... I inherited the Circle Two Ranch along with a cousin I've never met, Jim Hanson. I see. I had a letter from Jim telling me the ranch is in badly run down and heavily mortgaged. He offered to buy my share for a small sum. Did you sell it? No, I didn't. Perhaps it's foolish of me to tell you all this, but... Well, I never owned property before, and... Well, even if the place is run down and everything, I sort of wanted to walk around in my own land before I sold out. I can understand your feeling. I wrote Jim I was coming, but I heard no more from him. I'll stay in town, of course, until things are settled. Is there a hotel there, do you know? Yes, I, I believe there is. Driver conscious now, Kimisabi. Him feel better. Good. We'll put him in the coach, Tonto, and you can drive the stage. I'll ride along with you to the edge of town. All right, let's get going. Meantime, three horsemen stopped in front of an office in Hilton. Hold oh, there. Oh, 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 Easy now. Uh, come on. We gotta let Lawyer Jones know that things didn't work out right. Sure. Right. Well, men, what's happened? We didn't get to hold up the stage, Mr. Jones. A couple of hombres interfered, so we cleared out pronto. Yeah, they come riding at us with guns blazing. One of them was mass. The other was an Indian. That's right. There were plenty of tough hombres to try to buck. <coughs> Did they follow you here? Nope. The driver took a bullet, and the horses on the stage were running wild. While they went after the stage, we lit out. Jim Hanson isn't going to like this. Jim said if anything happened, we were to report here to you. That uh, you'd know what to do next. That's right. Boss said you'd have another plan ready, Mr. Jones. Uh, luckily, I have. Bill, you and Jake ride out to the ranch and tell Jim what happened. All right. Tell him to go to the old Miller homestead on the West Trail like we planned. Spike will stay with me. All right. Let's go, Jake. Sure. And don't waste any time getting there, either. No, we won't. What are we going to do? Well, the two hombres who ran you men off may have been Al Hoots who intended to hold up the stage themselves. Could be. But sooner or later, the stage will be brought to Hilton. And the girl with it. We'll be ready to meet her and take her out to meet her cousin, Jim Hansen. I told Jim in the first place it was better to pay off the girl than to have something happen to her so close to Hilton. Ah, uh, nobody could put the blame on him or us. Well, maybe not, but it was risky. Now, my plan is much easier and better. And it won't cost him very much to get the ranch legally. Well, let's get down to the stage office right now and be waiting. A short time later, Tonto drove the stage into town while the Lone Ranger stayed on the outskirts of Hilton. Half an hour went by before Tonto returned and drew rein where the masked man was waiting. Oh, it's got Oh, fella. Oh, fella. Is everything all right, Tonto? Uh, me tell Sheriff about outlaws. 
Driver, go to doctor. Well, uh, what about Miss Roberts? Did she go to the hotel? No. Uh, two men met her at stage. Me hear one say him lawyer for cousin. Him say him take girl to see Ranch Pronto. That's good. I was hoping someone would meet her. By the way, while we're here at the edge of town, you might as well get a few supplies, Tonto. Then we'll go find a campsite for the night. Huh? Me go now. Me not be long. Get him up, scout. Toto went to the general store in Hilton and ordered what supplies he thought necessary. While he was waiting, he overheard two men talking near him. How's everything out at the circle, too, Wong? Everything very fine. Much cattle, much grain. Many hands to feed all the time. Well, that's good. Sure was a shame old Jed Roberts had to pass on like he did. Guess you sort of miss him out there, don't you? Mr. Jed, very fine man. Not make Wong work so hard like Mr. Hassan. Well, if it ever gets too tough for you, Wong, I know where they'd be glad to get a good Chinese cook like you. Soon, maybe Missy Roberts come stay at ranch. Maybe it'd be not so much work for Wong. Well, uh, who's she? Miss Roberts. She girl all the same at get part of ranch like Miss Hassan. Oh, but uh, say, you're riding east in that buckboard. How about a lift as far as my place? You bet. Wong be glad to have a company. Well, here's your stuff, Wong. I had the boy take the other stuff out the buckboard. Thank you very much, Mr. Stevens. We go now. Uh, I'll take a few for you. You come ride a buckboard. Wong be very happy. <laughs> well, uh, have your things ready in a few minutes, Indian. Oh, that all right. All right, me wait. Uh, Chinese feller. Him cook at Circle Two Ranch? Yep, that's right. Wong's one of the best cooks in the territory. And yeah, they're mighty lucky to have him, seeing as he has so many to cook for out there. Circle Two is one of the biggest and most profitable spreads around here, you know. Well, uh, me not know that. Uh, there. I guess that's what you ordered. Uh, money there and counter. Me. Oh. <laughs> After meeting Mary Roberts at the stage, Mr. Jones and Spike, who rode his horse beside the buckboard, took her out the west trail. A few miles from town, they approached a dilapidated old homestead, standing amidst an overgrowth of coarse grass and sagebrush. Lawyer Jones pointed to it and spoke. Well, there's a the place, Miss Roberts. You mean that's the so-called ranch Uncle Jed left to Cousin Jim and me? Ooh, that's it, all right. There's a sign up ahead at the entrance with the name of the ranch on it, the Circle Two. Well, I heard from Cousin Jim about the place, but, well, I never thought it was as bad as that. Yes, you would have saved money if you'd have taken his word and let him send you a check for your share to St. Louis. Well, maybe so, but I thought I'd feel better satisfied if I saw the place first. I'm terribly disappointed. Yeah, for that matter, so is your cousin. But he thought if he bought it outright from you, he might be able to do a little something with it. Frankly, I think he's very foolish. Get up there, get up. That ranch house sure isn't much to look at, Miss Roberts. Yes, I know. I wonder why Jim doesn't just let the whole thing go for the mortgage. Well, the mortgage isn't much, but he'll lose money by the time he pays it off and gives you a small payment for your share. I wish I hadn't come. Well, don't worry. Jim will be waiting for you, and I have the necessary papers, and we can get the entire deal over in short order. Then you can leave Hilton whenever you're ready. The sooner the better. Well, there's the stage leaves tomorrow morning early. You can uh, put up at our place tonight. My wife will be glad to have you. And I'll see to it myself that you get to the stage. Well, I'd hope to stay come in on, the West on. for at least a week or two after such a long trip. I could put up at the hotel in Hilton. Oh, you'll be sorry if you do stay. There's nothing here but rough men and sparse country. I suggest you leave when you have the chance tomorrow. Yes, I guess you're right after all. Oh, mercy, look at that awful-looking house. Oh, there. Oh, oh. oh, oh, fella. Steady, boy. I'll go tell Jim Hanson you're here. Oh, now that I've seen this place close up, I'll take your advice, Mr. Jones. The sooner I sell my share, the better. And I'll leave him that stage in the morning. After joining the Lone Ranger at the edge of town, Tonto suggested they ride east of town to find a campsite. As the two men rode along, the Lone Ranger spoke. I, uh, I was wondering, Tonto, why did you want to come out this way for a campsite, huh? Well, me want to see if we come to Circle Two Ranch. 
Me hear Chinese cook from ranch say it out this way. Oh? Hello, I so curious. Well, me hear men who meet Miss Roberts say Circle 2 out on West Trail. It not make sense. Maybe you misunderstood. No. No, me sure. Me hear both cook and lawyer say that. That's right. You did say that one of the men who met her was her cousin's lawyer. Uh Uh-huh. Me tell you that. I'm beginning to get curious, too. Why should he take her out the West Trail if... Oh, there's a large spread just ahead, Tonto. The ranch house is very big. Ah. And look, Kimasabi, there's sign just ahead. It says Circle 2 Ranch. Ah, So it does. That's strange. Miss Roberts told me the ranch she and her cousin inherited was practically worthless. Well, Circle 2 Ranch we see now worth plenty, Kimasabi. I know. Most of her. Most of her. Oh, Well... Why we stop? There's something wrong, Toto. We're going to find out what it is. We'll ride over to the West Trail right now and find out where that lawyer took Miss Roberts and why. All right, let's go. Come on, Silver. Come on, stop. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. When the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode out the trail east of Hilton and saw the large and prosperous Circle 2 Ranch, the masked man realized that there was a decided difference between the story Mary Roberts had told about the ranch and the facts. He told Tonto they were going to ride out the West Trail and try to locate Mary Roberts. Me remember story, girl, tell you what stage, Kimusabi. And that's why me want to come out here. Get look at the Circle 2 spread. Now that we've seen it, we know someone's misleading Mary Roberts. In fact, now that I think it over, it could be that the stage incident was... Otto, if what I think is really true, Mary Roberts will lose plenty. In fact, she may even lose her life. Won't tell her! Come on, Meantime, Mary Roberts and Lawyer Jones entered the old house to which he had taken her. Oh, my, how terrible it is in here. Well, well, this must be my cousin Mary from St. Louis. That's right, Jim. Here she is. Miss Roberts, this is Jim Hanson. So your cousin Jim Hanson. How do you do? Nice meeting up with you, Mary. (laughs) It seems like you and me were Uncle Jed's favorite relatives. Or maybe from the looks of what he left us, he hated us the most. Well, I must say I'm not a bit impressed with our inheritance, cousin Jim. I was hoping it might not be as bad as you said in your letter, but... You mean you'd stay out here if it was in fair condition? Well, yes, I did have that idea in mind. Oh, my. The West is a dangerous place for a woman to live, Miss Roberts, especially when she's single and alone. I heard about your experience with that stage holdup. Oh. I should think that would have scared you about the West. You heard about it already? Well, how on earth uh, Well, uh, news travels fast out here, ma'am. Oh, I see. But, Lawyer Jones, even you couldn't have known about the holdup until the stage arrived in town. Uh, and then we drove right out here. Well, oh, uh, a friendly Indian came by a while ago, Mary. He told me about it just before you arrived here. Oh, anyway, Spike told me when he came in just now and said you were out front. Uh, oh, yes, of course. Spike could have told Why, that's right. Uh, now, if you want to get things over with in a hurry... But yeah, there I... isn't any hurry, is there, Mr. Jones? I'd like to look around a bit. Uh, <laughs> well, I've never owned any land before, and... Well, even if it is sparse and uncultivated, I'd like to walk over it while it still belongs partly to me. Well, I reckon you can wander around a bit if you like to, Cousin Mary. 
But uh, I have to get going and don't have much you time. You go to... right ahead, Cousin Jim. Well, I'll look well... things over and we can fix up any details in town tomorrow if necessary. Uh, but, uh, but, Miss Roberts, you said you wanted to get the stage out of Hilton in the morning. And if you were going to our place for the night... I've changed I... my mind, Mr. Jones. Huh? Oh, and I won't impose upon you and your wife. I'll stay in Hilton a few days at the hotel. Perhaps I can get another stage that will connect with the railroad. But uh, I'll make this sort of a vacation since it's costing me so much anyway. Well, like Lawyer Jones says, Cousin Mary, we were both hoping to get this matter settled right now. The sooner I own the place outright, the sooner I can start fixing it up. If you sign the papers now, I'll pay you $500 for your share. $500? Yep. But if you decide to wait, the price will go down to $300. Oh, my, you better take it, ma'am. Well, maybe you're right. But to be perfectly frank, the entire property doesn't look as though it's worth that much. Well, I told your cousin he was being very generous. Well, uh, after all, Cousin Mary spent time and money coming out here and all. I appreciate your interest, Jim. I guess if you really want me to sign the place over to you now, well, there's no reason why I shouldn't. Oh, fine, fine. I have the papers right here. Now sit right down in this chair, Cousin Mary. Thank you. I'll get pen and ink. Oh, you won't be sorry, Miss Roberts. You see... It says you give full right and title of your share of the Circle Two Ranch with all other assets and properties, both real and personal, that would have been yours under your Uncle Jed's will. Of course, there's nothing but this old house and what you see in it. The land is worthless as it is. Well, from the things it says in this paper, why, you'd think I was getting ready to sell a share in a large and prosperous ranch. Uh-huh. I found the pen and ink. What was that you were saying about a large ranch? Uh, Miss Roberts was just commenting about the wording of the paper she's going to sign. All right, ma'am, you can sign right oh. there where I made that accident. Hey, boss, there's an Indian and a masked man on a white horse coming along the trail. Looks like the same two who interfered in that stage holder. Shut up, you fool. How did you know about them, Spike? That is, how could you know about the masked man and what he looked like? I, I talked to the driver of the stage. You didn't have a chance and you know it. You left town with us right after I got off the stage. I'm beginning to think that Never some... mind doing too much thinking, Cousin Mary. Just go ahead with the sign into that paper. Spike here can witness. No. I've decided to wait. Anyhow, I want to go out and speak to that masked man as he goes by. No, you don't. <laughs> Just sit where you are until they go by. Now, listen here, Cousin Jim. I don't like that at all. You have no right to... Shut be... up. We're through trying to be nice to you and talk you into signing that paper. Take the pen and sign it. I haven't time to waste. No, you can't talk to me like that. I won't sign it until I'm oh, ready. Oh, Jim, don't be so hasty. I'm sure Miss Roberts will settle this not now. Not until I go out, as I said, and talk to that masked man and in. I say you're not going out. Let him ride by. I'll call out and they'll hear me. No, you won't. Take your hand away from my mouth. Don't worry. You bit me, you crazy coyote. Now I wouldn't sign anything over to you for any price. I'm going Grab out. Grab a spike. Let sure. Me. Let me go. Now I know there's something wrong with this whole business. Let me go. Those two riders are just passing on the trail. Keep it quiet. They'll help me. Help! Shut up. I should let me go. Here, yeah, I'll gag her with this neckerchief. <laughs> Mary struggled desperately to cry out once more before the Lone Ranger and Tonto should ride out of hearing distance. But the gag was in place and her efforts were useless. Then she thought of an idea. Suddenly, reaching out toward the table, she grabbed the inkwell, and before either of the men could stop her, she flung it through a window at the front of the room. Look out, Jones! Now, why should she throw that at me? Now, see here, Miss Roberts. All this unpleasantness could be avoided if you'd sign that paper and let me take you to town. The, the masked man and the Indian have gone by now, so you're being foolish to talk about seeing them. Looks like we'll have to force her to sign that paper now, Jones. That'll be easy. You can save money, too. Well, I prefer to have things settled legally and in a friendly fashion, Jim. I'm sure if you promise to pay the 500, Mr. Roberts will sign. Well, all right. Take the gag out of her mouth, Spike, and let go of her. Yeah. I'll get some more ink, and then we'll get this business over with Prado. Just before Mary had tried to attract their attention, the Lone Ranger and Toto had been following the West Trail and had been passing the old homestead. There's an old broken-down place, Toto. There's a buckboard standing out front. Ah. And that looked like buckboard lawyer fella drive away from stage office with girl. I wonder. Hello, look, that sign. Ah. Sign says Circle 2 Ranch. There's something wrong here. Someone watch from window, Kimasabi. Me see him as we pass. We'll act as though we don't notice. Keep riding. Hello. Did you hear something? Like a yell? Ah, sound like woman call out. We could have been mistaken. We'd have to be sure before we... Someone throw something through a window. Tend not to notice. The 
we get over that rise, we'll circle around and come up behind the house. Monsieur, in a month's come. Inside the house, after the Lone Ranger and Tonto had passed, Jim went out to the kitchen and returned with more ink. Placing it on the table in front of Mary, he lifted the pen and held it out to her. All right. Now sign that paper. No. There's something strange about all this. I don't believe this is the place Uncle Jed left at all. And if it is, there's some reason why you want my share so bad. You know, I'm afraid you're getting a little too smart, young lady. Now I suggest you sign. You call yourself a lawyer. You must be a part of Jim's plan to get the share of the legacy away from me. Oh, let's get tough with it, Jim. She'll sign up then. And what if I do sign that paper? What assurance have I that I'll get safely back to Hilton? None at all. But if you don't sign, you know, doggone well, you won't get back there. Understand? Now sign that paper. <gasps> You're hurting my arm. Go ahead. Use a pen. <laughs> all right. Don't say what, anything. Uh, what? Who said that? Look at the broken window. The masked man. Out. No, you won't. <laughs> My leg. All right, you. I got my gun at the girl's back. She's between you and me. Are oh, you dirty coward? Ah, oh, shut up. <laughs> Jones, yes? sneak out the back and get the drop on that coyote out well, there. Well, he'll see me leaving. Nobody leave here. <laughs> and you, Trump, come. Look, the Indian in the doorway. He's safe, Trump, come. You sneaking wretch can I'll shoot you. No. Oh, my goodness. You forgot to keep the girl in front of you, Hanson. Keep them covered, Tonto. I'll come in. Ah, uh, you'll be all right now, girl. Oh, thank heaven. I was afraid you and the masked man didn't hear my efforts to attract your attention. Ah, we hear, but we make out we not hear. Then we come up behind house. Are you all right, Miss Roberts? Oh, yes, thanks to you and the Indian. I don't quite understand, but these men were trying to... Yes, I know. They were trying to get you to sign over your share of the Circle Two Ranch. One of the biggest and most prosperous ranches in this section of the West. You mean this place is... This isn't the Circle Two spread, as they wanted you to believe. The Circle Two is out east of town... Well, we'll get these crooks to jail, Miss Roberts. Then you can make arrangements to look at the right ranch. From what that man over there said a while ago, I feel sure he was one of the men who raided the stage. You put the blame for that where it belongs. On that cousin of yours, Jim Hanson. Keep quiet, Spike. Oh, why should I? You wanted to have something happen to her so she wouldn't get her share. I heard you tell Bill to use a bullet on her when we held up the stage. Oh. The sheriff will be interested to hear all that. Otto, I'll take these men along with me. You bring Miss Roberts in the buckboard. Ah, me do it. All right, let's get going, you... But my leg, it's, it's wounded. Help him, Jones. Come on. Yes, yes, I owe a lot to you and that masked man, Tonto. <laughs> I never thought I'd be willing to put faith in an Indian when I came west. Ah, uh, you be safe now. Me take you back to town, buckboard. Oh, I know I'll be safe. You've been wonderful. And to think my own cousin turned out to be a crook. Well, I'm sure when an accounting is made of the circle, too, it will show that Cousin Jim has stolen so much that, well, I'll eventually own the whole circle, too, Ranch. Mm, that's right. With a big ranch like that, well, I'll need a man with a good business head and a firm hand to run things. That mask man, he's so masterful. <laughs> so tall and handsome. <laughs> well, here... Yeah. Him always be good friend when you need help. And Tonto always be good friend, too. Oh, yes, of course. I understand. But Tonto, who is he? Oh, him. Him good friend to all people who need him. Him called Lone Ranger.
This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day and thanks for listening.